everybody, this is Baseball IQs. I'm Coach Jack, this is Coach Hayden. We're going to be learning about outfield ground balls today. Uh, and, and what's the purpose of an outfielder and why do, we, why do we need to work on fielding a ground ball properly? So, Coach, show me out. Yeah, so uh, I like the question you said, what's the purpose of an outfielder? And the first thing we need to understand as coaches is the outfield's purpose. I know there's a lot to an outfielder, but simply put, it's to get the ball in our glove and out of our glove as fast as possible. That's really the purpose of an outfield, to get the ball into the infielder so the coach at third base can stop those base runners. Sure. That's a big part of what we do. And everything that we teach is geared around simply that fact that we need to get the ball in our glove and out of our glove. And how do we do it the most efficient way? Well, that's what we're going to learn today. Perfect. So, um, uh, understanding the process of, of, of a ground ball, fielding a ground ball in the outfield. We're gonna, today we're going to learn a ground ball right at us, okay? The uh, very first thing we understand is, uh, obviously, pitch pitch routine. We've talked about that in, in, in another video. If you haven't seen that video, we encourage you to see it. But after I, I take my pretty pitch routine, I'm going to have that position. That ball is coming right at me. I'm going to be full speed to the baseball. Okay. okay? So I want to be explosive towards the baseball. So if you can see the distance here, I'll be full speed. At this point, I'm running full speed. But at some point, I want to be under control through the baseball. So I'm full speed to the baseball, under control, through the baseball. So those steps began to, I really began to slow down and get out of myself and become athletic and get ready to go into my actual footwork of fielding a ground ball. And a big thing here is understanding when we field a ground ball in the outfield, we have to have momentum, which is simply movement towards an object, momentum towards our target because our throws are so long, we want to avoid uh, catching ground ball, you know, on a knee or, 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 or uh, like an infielder, and then creating momentum. We want to already have momentum going through the ball. That way, when we make a throw, a long throw, it's a good, nice, hard, backspun throw that gets all the way to the guy. So we got to have momentum going towards our target, and we want to attack through the baseball. Try to get a short hop and attack through the ball uh, in the outfield. Hold on, Kevin. Hold on. You said short hop. Short hop. That sounds very familiar for me, for an infielder, right? So as an infielder, I attack every short hop. That's how we feel the ground ball because that's the surest hop, right? Right. So now sure. feel you do the same thing? Yeah, I mean that ball's bouncing and I don't really know what it's gonna do. So the outfielder is really the short hop is the most efficient hop. The ball that hits the ground and bounces, it can go up, down, it can go middle, it can go to the side. But as soon as it hits the ground, it's gonna come towards me at some point. Because right. the momentum the momentum set is gonna come keep coming towards me. So if I can get my glove right on that ball and get it off the ground, that's gonna consistently help me catch the ball. Now, I know what you're thinking. Coach, what if I can't get to the short hop? Good question. We don't want to catch the short hop, coach, or we want to catch the long hop. So we want to either catch that ball coming off the ground or catch that ball almost hitting hitting the ground. We, we want to avoid the middle because that's where it gets hit. The in between hop. The in between hop. So if the ball, if I'm, if I'm feeling a ground ball in the outfield and I'm attacking that ball and I'm this far away from the ball, I'm you're gonna be in trouble. I'm gonna be in trouble because that ball has time to do all those funny things, and I don't have the time to react. Correct. Okay. Yep. But if I'm back here, long hop, I can react. If I'm obviously short hop, I've got it. I don't have to react. Yep. Yep. So you want to you want to teach our outfielders that our mindset is to attack the baseball. We want to go get it. And the last thing we we'll talk about attacking the baseball is we attack the ball much like an infielder does. Go to we get to the glove side. Now, we don't step to the glove side. We actually, as we approach the baseball, we just approach it to our glove side. So if we're obviously left-handed, we approach to our right. If we're right-handed, we approach to our left. We want to get our ball by the side of the baseball for really two reasons. One, um, because we're reading a hop. I want to read a short hop. Gotcha, I like the sound of that as well. Yeah, just like an inputter, right? We're reading the hop, going, trying to get the short hop. But also, too, it really it makes it easier for me to keep my momentum, my momentum going through the play. Whereas if, I, if I'm catching the ball here or here, I'll have to, you know, readjust. Yeah, readjust. So, coach, I got a question for you too. If you're getting to the glove side of the baseball, like on the infield, I feel the ground ball. I get plus side, short chubby steps, right left receive, and I feel like I'm off, but I only use one hand because it allows me to react and, and pick through the ball better. It's the same thing. Absolutely. We do not use two hands. Okay. Yeah. Um, simply because two, I mean, just it limits our reach. You know, if I'm going to go to an outfitter, again, we'll, we'll talk about the technique in a second, but if I'm going to attack this baseball, I can't, 
if I go two hands, my reach is limited versus having one hand, I can adjust if it does do something crazy. I'm hoping to catch one in short about it, but I can adjust uh, in case it does something crazy. But also, it's just a more fluid motion with one hand. With two hands, I'm going to be awkward and I'm going to come all the way up and all this stuff. But whereas, if I go one hand, now I'm just more fluid. I can really go through the ball, attack, and it's much easier for me to uh, be smooth through my, my throwing motion. Coach, I know you haven't, we haven't even explained the steps yet. We've covered a lot. But I'm noticing also your body posture is way different than I expected. Being an infielder, I didn't really know how to play outfield. And so when I went to the outfield, I just went and caught the ball. And your body posture is different. So what I've noticed is, and, and I'll do this from the side because it's, it's, uh, it's better to see from this way. Instead of where, how I used to do it, I would just lay it over and go sure. get the ball like this. You're, you're almost lunging every time. Every time you've shown, which is natural for you, so I, I'm assuming that's the right way, is that you're lunging down with your back leg and keeping your head up a lot more and almost reaching out with your glove full extension. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's what you're talking about is really a lot of reasons why a kid misses the ground balls. But the outfield because our head comes forward over our toes. That affects our depth perception. That ball's bouncing, it's coming towards me, I'm going towards it, my eyes are moving, that ball's bouncing, right? I'm trying to read that thing, it's really hard to do. And the moment my head goes down towards the ground, over my toe, I, all that, everything that I've perceived has totally changed. Right, the depth, I might think that ball's gonna, if I might be, it, 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 really, it, it really hurts us in those in-between times, and those long hop times. The short hop times, we can get away with it a little bit. Because you pick through it. Because you pick through it. But on those ones that we can't get the short hop, it really affects us the most because now I think that ball is going to bounce here and it stays down low. All because I've changed my eyes. Okay. So, yeah, there's two ways to go to drop ball in the outfield. And both ways, no matter which way it is, we want to make sure that our body stays really behind our knee as we go down the you get the baseball and my head never goes over my foot, but I always stay, again, in with my body and my gloves out in front of my foot. So no matter how we catch a, catch a baseball, we go down in our legs, we attack it with our back knee going down, we're bending like we're doing lunge, like you said, and our gloves out in front, and we want to catch the baseball with our head really behind our knee. Okay. So I think we've avoided, uh, Coach, what are the two ways to finish our ball? So two ways to put a ground ball, very simple, okay? The first one is opposite arm, opposite leg. So if you're gonna keep feeling a ground ball uh, and it's coming at you, I'm gonna have the, my glove foot, or sorry, my glove, and the opposite foot go down and attack the baseball. So if I'm opposite uh, foot, opposite uh, arm here, I'm gonna make sure that when that ball's coming, I'm in a good athletic position, in a sprinter's position. Remember, I'm going full speed, trying to create momentum, going towards my target. I'm in a good athletic position, I go down to my hips, glove out in front, and I'm gonna catch this baseball, uh, in front of my front foot. And the biggest thing here is this is a three step through. So after I catch this baseball, I'm going to take three steps. I'm going to take one step and square my body up. Two step, because my, my second step is a step behind. Third step is a step and throw. Okay. And then the, the other way is just a two step way. So it's the same arm, same leg. So I'm going to go down with my glove, and I'm also going to go, going to go down with my glove side foot. So same concept down to my hips, glove out the front. What, wherever this ball is, I'm going to catch it up in my body, and this time, I'm going to go two steps. Now I'm going to go right to my core box. So I catch this baseball, I bring my back foot through, point my, 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 my ankle at my target, one foot, one step, two step, and three. Okay. So I'm going to get some more uh, full speed motion, it will look just like this. If I'm going to go same arm, same leg, two step, I'm going to catch this baseball, and I'm going to go right to my core box, boom, throwing that baseball. Versus three step through which would be opposite on opposite leg. I'm going to catch this baseball and go one, two, three, throw. Okay, coach, so I got a question for you. One of those seems a whole lot faster than the other. Right. Why would I use the one that's slower if my job as an outfielder is to get the ball from my glove to the infielder's glove as quickly as possible? It's a good question. So there's two ways to do it, but really the way you're talking about is actually the harder way of the two. Okay. So, same arm, same leg, couple things happen. One, uh, I'm going full speed, and so I have a tendency, when I'm, I'm under control, top of my I have a tendency now with this foot to go down more with my head. 
I just, for whatever so reason. That's the one that we lose our depth perception. We lose our depth perception. So I have a tendency to do that more often. The second thing, and the biggest reason on both these, is whenever I go to throw, I need to get my shoulders turned to my target. And so when I go down here and I go to catch this baseball, a lot of times I'm moving so fast, I don't get my shoulders all the way turned. And so now when I got to make that throw, that ball sounds on. That's so, the ball we leave our arm behind. You see the ones that take off into the stands because they do it. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So okay. that one is a lot harder to do. Now, again, it's not possible, but it's a lot harder to do to get our shoulders all the way turned. But the other way is just, um, for me, it's easier to catch the baseball on this foot. Again, I played outfield for many years, and I, I, I favored this way. And for a couple reasons. Biggest one was I felt more consistent catching a ball. I had more body behind me. And I catch the ball to the side, but I was also able to even my body. So it just mentally I knew that I had a safeguard. This way is a more of a do or die way for me. I knew that it was the quicker way to do it. So if it was a do or die situation, I was going to go my same foot because I, and I, and I knew it would be faster. And I just had to tell myself, make sure I get my shoulders turned. But I, I didn't like it every time because I just, for whatever reason, I knew that if I missed this ball, it was going to go to the wall. Right. And so when I went this way, it sure up my brain knowing okay, I, got, I got a little bit of safety behind me. But also, too, now I'm, I'm able, it's easy for me to lunge. For whatever reason, this is just harder to, to do uh, when we go down to check the baseball. A lot of times I go with my head. This way, for me, it just felt better to go opposite arm, opposite leg because I was more consistent catching the baseball. And then I was more consistent getting my body turned. I gave myself more time, so my throws were always better. Okay. So then really, as a coach of younger kids, I should be teaching them the opposite arm, opposite leg. For me, if you're going to start off coaching an 8-year-old, a 9-year-old, a 10-year-old, um, I would go off on opposite leg. A um, couple reasons is, number one, is catching the baseball, making sure that they're sure enough to catch the baseball and teach them this way first, and then two, throws are important. And so, in getting our body all the way turned is going to help us make those throws, especially early on in our young years. We're not going to throw a lot of guys out. It's just the reality. We don't have the arm strength a lot of the time. we got to make good throws to our cutoff guy. And so, getting our body in a position consistently to make that throw, and an easier way to do it, I believe is better. So, I would, if I were you and you got a young athlete, teach them opposite arm, opposite leg. Teach them the three-step method. Have them rep it a bunch. Whenever they feel comfortable and they can catch the ball consistently, then we teach them the same arm, same leg. And now it's, a, it's just a different mentality. Now I gotta think quicker. I gotta think, get my body all the way turned. I gotta make sure that my head stays tall and not over my front foot. There's just more things that if I if I can't consistently catch the ground ball, then there's too much going on. It's so quick of a movement that I'll I'll, I'll, I'll miss this. Before I can even do this. So they need to be short-handed, opposite or opposite leg, catching the ground ball consistently every time before they need to learn this way. Okay, and then from what it sounds like, it's really it, it, what dictates which one you use is the situation. Correct. If there is a guy I've got to throw out and it's a big deal, so a guy on second base, single to me, right, in the outfield, I want to go. Same arm, same leg. Sure. Because it's the faster one that I'll be able to actually have it. I'll have a better chance of throwing the guy out as long as I get my shoulders turned and all that. Right. And then on a on a single with nobody on base, this is the more consistent, the more sure route that I know I'm going to be able to get the ball in uh, with a good throw and, uh, and and still. I mean, it's not that much slower. So exactly yeah, right. Yeah. I mean. Time-wise, we're talking about tenths of a second, which in baseball are important. You know, tenth of a second is three feet. So if you're wasting half a second, you're wasting, you know, a good amount of time, a good amount of that runner has ran, you know, 10, 15 feet in that time that we've wasted, which is, you know, in baseball, the difference between a bang, bang play, you know, or, or say five mile. So, yes, the timing is important, but you can throw a guy out on an option. Sure. I don't want you to think that I'm saying that you can't do this way. Uh, you can't. You'll never throw it out this way. I threw out many guys on this foot. Um, for me, it just it just felt, my throws were better. Now I have friends that can do this all day, and that's just their body is different than mine, and uh, they have maybe stronger longer, 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 and they have maybe stronger arms, so they can get away with their body not being all the way turned. So they they threw guys out, and it's just better for them. 
And so for me though, teaching a young kid, I'll start my opposite, uh, leg, opposite uh, arm, and then I move, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12. By the time they're 12, they need to be able to do that. Be able to do that. Yeah. So the only, and this may date me, Coach, because when I played outfield, it was a long time ago. The only thing I haven't heard you say anything about yet is the classic oh, knee to the ground. Why, 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 do, well, why are you not mentioning that, and why did I think that was the way to go? So a lot of coaches teach this early on, six, seven, eight years old. And um, I would say at that age, it's okay because you're never ever going to throw anybody out and you don't want the ball to get behind you. So you do, you are more of a goalie in the outfield. You truly are the last line of defense. And we don't want to keep those guys running bases so we, we can go to the ground at those at that age. But as soon as we get to real baseball and kids start pitching and it's nine and it's 10 and it's 11, the problem with going to a knee, the first thing is, is a, a, big, a big fear factor. I'm scared to attack the baseball. I'm asking to get eat up. I'm asking for that ball to just absolutely, you know, take a hop and just... I mean, the whole point is, is you're getting your body in the way. You're not even thinking about catching Correct. it. Correct. The idea is you're waiting to get hit. Yeah, and coaches are scared to teach the right way. Either A, they don't know it, or B, they don't want their kids to fail. And a lot of times early on, you'll see kids try to do this and the ball will go underneath your glove because of failure. But understand that that's not really failure, that's just them learning. And the more reps they do at 9, 10, and 11, by the time they're 12, 13 in the high school, they'll be doing this really well. And it'll almost be to the point of impressive, that it'll impress the coach at the high school level. Sure. Whereas if, yeah, whereas if we're going down to a knee our whole entire youth career, at some point, you have to learn to catch the ball the right way. At some point, you have to be able to throw a guy out with momentum to the target. The only way to do it is, is, is in, a, in, a, in a sprinter position, you know, whatever what it is. That's the only way to do it. So, uh, when we get to high school, if we're not there, if we've never practiced it, we'll be way behind the eight ball. Sure. Whereas, if, if we've started at a young age, sure, at nine years old, at 10 years old, there's a little bit of better. And sure, we missed some of those ground balls, and it may be embarrassing. By the time we're 11 and 12 and 13 and 14 in high school, it'll be so natural that uh, we'll be, you know, way ahead of the, uh, the curve. All right. So then, how do I know as a coach? I'm teaching these methods. How do I know that they're doing it right? What's a good What's a good test? What can I do? Yeah, that's a question. So um, a good measure would be uh, right around one second. They need to get the ball in their glove and out of their glove. Right around one second. So if you have a stopwatch and somebody says one goes to them, or they drop balls in the outfield uh, in a game, when they catch the baseball, they want to get it out of the glove and right around one second. For both. For both. For okay. both. Obviously, this way it's going to be a little quicker. Um, but the one, the one second is a good measure. And that's, I, I know in pro ball, Gary Thurman, my high school coordinator, he was always wanting to be around one second. And if I was 0.9 to 0.8, uh, that was good, but being too quick could sometimes I found that it hurt my throws. And, and, and he would tell me if I made a bad throw, he would say, Hey man, you, you were going so fast there on, on your footwork that you didn't get your line off the turn. I was like, Oh man. And so it's a good measurement for a coach, and maybe sometimes it's hard to see. A kid, it looks like they're doing it right, but their throws are off. Grab a stopwatch and see how fast they're going. If they're going overly fast, their body's not getting turned all the way, and you can tell them, hey, let's slow down just a tick here. Let's make sure when you, when you go into your footwork, you get your body out of the turn and make that good throw, because ultimately, uh, the odds of us throwing a guy out are very low, already. I mean, most of the time we throw a guy out is because the base runner made a mistake, or it's because the coach made a mistake on sending them. And our job is just to make good throws. So if we try to, if we try to oh, you know, be so quick and so powerful and make a bad throw, it doesn't matter what they do. If they make a mistake or not, our throw will be on, 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 online and that guy will be safe regardless. So right around one second, uh, having them release the ball, and I would rather them be a tick slower, 1.1, uh, and have good throws, than be you know, uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and have bad throws. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below or reach out to us at baseballiqs at gmail.com.